Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. In today's video, I'll be making this little dresser for grandma's bedroom in the homestead house. Now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that in my last video, I made the wardrobe cupboard that matches this little dresser. And in the next video, I'll be making the matching nightstand, which will complete the set. Now I have to confess, I made a little bit of an oops when I was editing this video. I accidentally deleted the segment where I put the top of the dresser on. So I had to go back and reshoot that part. Now, of course, the dresser was already completed when I did that. So you will see that in that particular segment, my little dresser goes magically from raw wood to stained and then just as magically back to raw wood. What can I say? I had to improvise. As always, your cutting instructions will be in the description below. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I always love to hear your comments. Okay, let's have a look at what we'll need for this project. The materials that you'll need for this project are pretty basic. I have three types of wood that I'm going to be using. I have a 3 30 seconds of an inch wood, which will be primarily for the bulk of the dresser um, because it is a nice thicker wood. Um, but the insides of the drawers, I'm going to be using a little bit thinner wood. This is just a basswood and it's 1 16th of an inch in width. And then I have this little veneer piece, which is just going to go on the front of the dresser drawers. And this is about one millimeter in width. I've also got this little quarter inch square wood dowel, and I'm going to be using this to make the legs for the dresser. Now you can use anything you like for legs. Um, just because I'm using wood doesn't mean you have to. Um, some people like to use beads. So I have these little um, wooden beads that are probably the right color for the stain that I'm using. And you could use something like that. You can buy these beads in pretty much any size and you can buy them in raw wood as well. So you can paint or stain them any color that you like. I also have these little handles which will match the handles in the wardrobe that we did in the last video. I bought these from Etsy, uh, but again, you can use anything you like for a handle. As far as glues go, of course, I've got my wood glue, and I'm also going to be using some E6000 glue because I am going to be gluing in the little nails that hold on those handles. And I have some wood stain, and you can paint if you like, but I'm going to stain this one. I have a brush to apply that stain, a piece of shop towel to rub the stain off, and then of course I always use a little piece of wax paper or parchment paper underneath when I'm doing that so that I can protect my cutting surface. I have my rulers, my X-Acto knife. I have this very sharp awl for poking holes where my nails are going to go. Um, if you don't have one of those, anything that's sharp will do. I have my hand drill and the bit that I'll be using in this project is the 0.8 millimeter, um, which is the same one that I use when I'm putting pin hinges in, if you've seen some of my other videos. I have my um, tweezers, my sharp pencil, and then I have some clamps as well. Um, and I'll be using those when I apply the veneer finish to the front of the drawer front. And of course, no project happens in this room without a good cup of coffee. Before we do any gluing, the first thing that we want to do is make a few measurements on the side pieces as well as your back pieces. So those are pieces B and C. Um, we need to mark out a spot where the shelves or the dividers in between the drawers are going to sit. And I find that it's just easier to do that before you glue it all together. Um, so what we're going to do is on the side pieces, um, if you're setting it so that your um, longest length is to the bottom and then measure out from each side 18 millimeters so that's about here and then also from the other side coming in at 18 millimeters that is in imperial measurement uh, 11 16 of an inch do that on both sides and draw a line across and that will give you a good guide for where your where these dividers will sit if you want to also make another measurement 
um, millimeter wise for the width of the wood that you're going to use you can do that as well so I'm going to just put another little mark on the inside of those two marks at about two and a half millimeters from the original mark and I know then when I slide those dividers in that they're going to sit between those two marks let's put it up there so you can see uh, it'll sit between these two marks and these two marks You'll also do the same measurements on the back piece, uh, 18 millimeters from the bottom, 18 millimeters from the top, and draw your lines across. That way, when you slide your um, dividers in, you'll know where it's going to sit against the back of that wood as well. Okay, let's get started putting them together. You'll need piece A, piece B, which has two pieces, and piece C to start. So we're going to start by adding the sides to the base. So piece number A is our base, and we're going to be adding our B pieces on top of the base on the side. So I'll just get my glue. Want to make sure, of course, that it's flush on the top and the bottom and at a 90 degree angle. And that's where these little setup blocks come in so handy because I don't have to guess if it's at an angle, at the right angle or not. Um, these blocks make sure that they are. And then we'll add C, which is the back of the dresser, in between those two sides and on top of the base. So add glue to three sides. Now that those four pieces are together, we're going to put in the dividers for our drawers. So these are your pieces marked E, and I'm going to just slide them in where I drew those lines originally at the 18 millimeter mark, and we'll glue both of those dividers into this unit. Dun, 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 dun. This is where the magic happens. All right, as I said in my comments at the beginning of the video, I did accidentally delete the segment where I applied the top to the dresser. So I did want to go over it very quickly with you. So of course, I just added glue to the tops of the side and the back of the dresser. And then I laid it down on a flat surface and put the top on top. Um, I did that because you'll want the top or sorry, the back of the dresser to be flush. 
the front of the dresser to also be flush but you'll notice that on the sides that each side overhangs by about two millimeters and that's just part of the design of the dresser okay back to our regular scheduled programming if you check your cutting instructions you'll see that i've placed an asterisk beside these pieces and these are pieces f g and h and i always recommend that you wait until you get to this stage before you cut the pieces i go in once this piece is put together or I've gotten this far and I'll actually measure then um, the distance between say the base and the first support and then between the support and the second support and so on. Sometimes they're not all exactly the same. Uh, you know with with miniatures you know a fraction of a millimeter can make a difference in whether or not a drawer will fit and slide smoothly or not fit. And so I measure each of those individually and I cut those pieces based on the size of those openings. So the instructions that I've given you in the cutting instructions really are more guidelines than they are actual um, specific measurements. So for our drawers, um, we have a base, we have the back, and then we have the two sides. So I'll put these two away because they're going to be built the exact same way as this one I'm going to show you. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to put the back of the drawer on top of the base. And then our side pieces are going to sit inside this L shape. So they'll sit on top of the base and they'll sit right up against the back of the drawer. And your front of your side piece should be flush with the front of the drawer itself. So we'll go ahead and glue those in next. We're going to work on the drawer fronts next. So these are pieces I and J and in my last video I made a wardrobe for this bedroom and this dresser is going to match that wardrobe. So it's going to have the same finish on top of the drawers as the other piece did. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue these pieces on top of the drawer fronts. There's about a two millimeter um, edge around each of them and because this wood is so thin I'm going to make sure that I clamp it down really well so that it doesn't warp. I've been dying to try this glue spreader. Um, I looked for it forever and every craft store I've been in for months and months couldn't find it finally went to Amazon and got it and they're awesome. So we're going to add handles to the drawer fronts and these are the same handles that I used for the wardrobe. 
So they've got two little holes on each side and they did come with these teeny tiny little nails which are way too small to tap in with a hammer. So I'm going to pre-drill the holes into the wood first and then we'll drop those nails in with some glue. So I'm going to measure in from the top piece five millimeters from each end and we'll try and get as close to the middle from the top to bottom as we can. So we'll lay that up against our ruler and in the middle. And then I'm just going to mark the hole with this awl. And I just poke it in. Now this top piece of wood is very, very thin and very, very soft. So it doesn't take much pressure to get that to go in. I want to make sure that it's level and we'll poke a hole on the other side. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the same on the other side. Going in five millimeters, the layer handle. up against it poke our hole on either side and I've done that to all three of the drawers now I'm going to take my hand drill and I'm just going to drill into those holes. I've looked into getting one of those little power drills um, because you can get them this very tiny size with these very small bits. But I'm actually worried with um, with a power that I might just go way too far. Um, at least with these little hand drills, you can control the speed that you're drilling into, and so it's a little easier to control the depth that you're going. If anybody has one of the little drills that are power drills or battery, um, and you like them or don't like them, if you have uh, some information you'd like to share, I always like to hear it. You can just leave a comment down below in the video and let me know if you have one what you think of them. Before we get those handles on though I am going to stain everything so we'll stain the main part of the dresser as well as the drawer fronts. I am not going to be staining the inside of the drawers. I'm going to be using this semi-transparent walnut colored stain which again is the same stain that I used on the wardrobe itself so let's get that stained this is the kind of stain that you brush on leave for a couple of minutes and then wipe off so I will say that um, when you have two different types of wood which is what I've done here this top piece is a different type of wood than what's underneath it each different kind of wood is going to pick up a stain differently so they're not going to look exactly the same um, but that's okay for this piece I kind of liked the idea of the different um, looks um, I think it gives it dimension um, when they're a little bit different but that's just my personal preference it'll be up to you whether or not you even want to add that second piece on the top and if you do, um, whether or not you want to paint it or stain it. Paint, of course, it doesn't really matter what's underneath. It's all going to look the same. Uh, but stain is a little different. Last time I did this, I had a pair of gloves, but I cannot find them anywhere. I'm making sure that I'm getting the sides as well. You can add um, extra coats if you like. The more coats you add, the darker the wood is going to be. 
I'm purposely only doing one coat um, because if there is a little tiny bit that's showing through that doesn't look like it's stained, that's okay because I kind of want that older aged look for this piece anyway. So I'll just put that to the side. And we're going to do that to all three of the drawer fronts and then to the dresser itself. I switched over now to this E6000 glue. I find anytime I am gluing any kind of metal pieces that it just holds so much better than your standard wood glue or craft glue. So here are my handles and we're going to be just placing a little bit of glue on these teeny tiny little nails and then popping them into the holes to hold those handles on. So there you can see, and we have six handles to put on, two on each of the drawer fronts, and then we'll be back to attach those to the drawers. Before you start gluing the fronts to the drawers, it's important that you do a dry fit. Um, and by that I mean, um, we already know that this fit in there, um, but I also know that when I put stain on something because it's a liquid, Sometimes some woods have a tendency to swell a little bit and so you want to make sure that that still fits and you'll also want to make sure that your drawer front fits not just the space but also as far as the depth because uh, when I made this little drawer insert it's not as wide as the drawer itself. Here if I put it on here you can see that there's about a three millimeter distance to the front and that's to accommodate the width of the of the drawer front. So do that little dry fit before you start gluing things together. And if you do have to shave some things down or sand some things down, there's a um, much better time to do it before you've glued that on than after. So we'll add our drawer fronts now to the drawers. So I'm just going to put some glue on the three sides of the drawer. And this front actually sits flush on both sides as well as the bottom. So if you have it on a flat surface and you can push it in that way, you'll notice that the top of the drawer is a little bit higher. It's two, maybe three millimeters higher than the drawer. But I think that's necessary in order to have this fit perfectly into the space and then still be able to move the drawer in and out easily. So we'll go ahead and attach all three of those. So all that's left now is just to put some legs on the dresser. And so to do that, I'm just going to be using some quarter inch wood dowel. Um, you can find this. I found this actually at the dollar store. Now the trick, of course, to putting legs on furniture is to make sure that the bottom edge of your leg is completely flat, which is important, um, but also that all of the legs are exactly the same size. So for this particular type of cut, um, I will be using a little miter saw. So I have this little hand saw and it's very, very 
thin. I'll see if I can find the brand and maybe put a link for you below. Um, <clears throat> but it does do really nice cuts. So we'll start by measuring out three eighths of an inch because that's the size I'm going to use. Make sure your pencil is nice and sharp so you're not getting a super thick line. And then if you've never used this type of saw before, if I was to give you any kind of a hint, and I'm going to line that pencil mark up with this cut piece. If I was to give you any kind of tip, it's to let the saw do the work. If you're pushing down and applying a lot of pressure as you're sawing, um, what's going to happen is the same as with these chomper tools is you'll cut through you know three quarters of it or maybe a little more and then it'll just snap off the bottom piece and it won't be a nice clean cut so you don't need to apply pressure I guess is what I'm saying so if you line up your saw in there and just very gently moving it back and forth and as I said let the saw do the work And you'll see what a nice clean cut that is and how nice and level it is, which is perfect for the feet of any kind of furniture. So I'm going to go ahead and cut four of those and then we're going to stain them and put them onto the dresser. So here are the little pieces and see I left one side unstained. It doesn't really matter. The glue will still stick to the stain. Um, but we're going to go ahead now and glue that to the bottom of the dresser. I'm going to glue that in about three millimeters from each side. So three millimeters from the front, three millimeters from the side. I'm just going to scrape away some of that excess glue. There we have our finished dresser. This was a fun little project. I really enjoyed making this little dresser and it's gonna fit really nicely in beside the wardrobe in grandma's bedroom. We have one final piece left to make for the bedroom and that's the nightstand, which will match the dresser and the wardrobe. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, happy crafting. Bye now.